Ewokesan. Wado keke Ewokesan. Egbe fun mare legbere. Menon. Ne apsyole. Aigbe Ewodare Okosu. Omon ne san biele. Omon na egbe. Omon na emu. Omon na ele. Ewokesan. Wakara hara. Audience out there. I greet every one of you. In accordance to your time frame. And like some of you already know. I am by name. Aigbe Ewodare Okosu. Today I want to teach us. I want to talk to us and teach us as consigning our names. What names do we bear as African people? What names are we bearing as Africans? What is your name? Don't forget that your name is a symbol of your identity. But before I continue, let me uh, say this by way of letting us know that I am channeling this message to my tribe, my Asian tribe, my great Asian people. And I'm also using my Asian tribe as an avenue in passing out my message to other African tribe and languages because this message will enrich us. This message will help us. This message will help us retain our identity so that our identity, which is the ancient landmarks of our ancestors, will not be erased in our time. But before I continue, my people, I want to tell us the story of a particular hunter, a man who came to Africa. And this man is of the Western uh, group, a white man, he's a Westerner, who came to Africa. He came hunting for animals. And eventually, before he was able to get this animal, I'm using elephant as a case study. This hunter have to shoot down the mother elephant. And the elephant, the baby elephant, ran to the mother and starts moving about the mother. But the mother was already dead because the hunter who came hunting for elephants already killed the mother to enable him to take away the baby elephant. Eventually, the hunter took away the baby elephant from Africa to Western world, to Western part of the world. When he got there with the baby elephant, the hunter chained down the elephant or chained the elephant to a particular place and continued to nourish the elephant in his own way. On the long run, after the elephant must have grown to a mature elephant, the hunter have to take away the chain from the elephant and allow the elephant to go. But the elephant did not go. The elephant, it did not occur to the elephant that I have to go to where I come from because a particular mentality has been installed into this elephant. And this particular mentality that has been installed into this elephant it's not of the elephant mentality. It's not of the elephant ways of life. But even though the elephant has been taken away from chain, the elephant mentality still remains in chain. Let me now go to the message I want to talk to Ross about today. How a lot of African seems to be mentally chained in other ways seems to be mentally enslaved just as unto this baby elephant that, that was taken away from its soil down to western world. What is your name? Iwo Hesan, my Asian people, what is your name? Name is very, very important. The name we bear. A lot of us today in this, our generation, although it is not totally our fault. 
it started from the era of our own fathers the era of our fathers those parents who gave birth to us some of them bear english names and also they gave us english names but it isn't as rampant as it is today even though it is not our fault it will become your fault if you remain poor you were born poor quite understanding it can no longer become the faults of your parents that you were born poor and you remain poor so when you remain poor you cannot continue to cast blame on your parents that they born you poor all availability is at your disposal for you to be rich knowledge is at our disposal today if you still remain naive it is because you despise knowledge my people what is your name why is it very very important for us to bear names in accordance to our tribal group in accordance to our language in accordance to our tribe like i said from the beginning of this my message that name is a symbol of identity name uphold your identity a lot of us today are into misplaced identity most especially west african most especially nigerians within west africa it is not that round part the way people bear names that are not of their tribal names if you see people outside Nigeria who bear names that are not of their tribal names, it is not up to 20%. But in Nigeria, a lot of people bear names that are not of their tribal name, such as I am using my tribe, my Asian race, my Asian tribe, my great Asian people as a case study. And I want us to look into this to see how we will adequately return to our roots. Let us go back to our roots. Going back to your roots is not mere lip services. Going back to your roots is to go back to your roots to go and uphold and retain your identity. To go and make sure that the social cultural engagement of your tribal people is what becomes your ways of life. I want to say this for us in this generation. For example, your name is Mike. And you know Mike is not a son name. And you give birth to your son. Your son name is Joseph or Peter or John C as the case may be. Can you not see that your son whose name is John C and your name is Mike will be bearing name as such as John C Mike. These both names, which is the first name and the surname, do not even retain our Asian identity. By this, our race is going into extinct. When you are no longer alive, the children of your own children will also go by that way. Where is our names? Our names are no longer our topmost priority. Our names are no longer our fundamental priority. Where is our names? How are we making sure that we name our children in accordance to our tribe, in accordance to our language? I want to also say this to us, my people. English language is not a measurement of intelligence. The fact that you know how to speak English language fluently well does not necessarily mean you are intelligent. It is only a privilege that you know how to speak another man's language thoroughly well, fluently well. But that man's language you know how to speak, such as English language or French, is not a measurement for intelligence. Language is mood of communication or means of communication. It's not a measurement of intelligence. But today it is sad that in Nigeria, a lot of Nigerians assume that if someone knows how to speak English language perfectly well, such a person is very, very intelligent. No, you are wrong. 
English language is not measurement for intelligence. People who are intelligent are people who are able to retain their identity, starting from their name. Because your identity starts with your name. When you are asked to identify yourself, you will say, my name is Aibe Erodare Okosu. But when you say, my name is John C. Peter, you are misidentifying yourself. That is identity crisis. That is misrepresentation of self. Now, let's look at it from this angle. That your child that you gave birth to, his name or her name is Rejoice. Her name is Selidion. Her name is Glory, for example. And your own name is John C. And the name of this child we continue as glory johnson and your own race your own family is supposed to retain your tribal identity what happened to our ace and names names as such as of name as such as Uroro. name as such as okosu name of, as such as iman lobe name of such as onoman lobe don or enoman lobe don Name as such as Akiyami Ekiyoya. Name as such as Agbedion. Name as such as Enaholu. So on and so forth. These are beautiful names. But these days, in our own dispensation, it is generally seen or popularly seen that our people, if they give birth to their children, they will give their children English name. Some of them will manage to give their children a son name. And the son name they gave to their children, the names are not there. It is the English name they use for their document, they use for their identity. Their son name is not second class to them. It is very, very funny. When I tell you my name is Aibe Ewodari Okosu, you are asking me what is my English name. I'm not English man. What do I really need to do with English name? Is it a must that I must have English name? The English people who bear their, their tribal name as English name, do anyone ask them what is their African name? When we look at the, the Germans, they bear name in accordance to their tribe. When we look at the Chinese, they bear names in accordance to their tribe. When we look at the Russians and the Ukrainians, they bear names in accordance to their tribe. They are not buried in names for you to be able to pronounce it. They are not buried in names for it to sound beautiful in your hearing. They are buried in names for it to reflect their identity. And when you ask them what is your name, they tell you their names. It is up to you for you to listen perfectly well to be able to pronounce their names. But we Nigerians, my Essam people, they go as such as bearing name that they assume the name sound beautiful. And if you ask some of them, they don't even know the meaning of the name, the English name they are bearing. And if some of them ought to know the English name, the meaning of the English name, they have to go into dictionary. Imagine that you need to go into dictionary to know the name, the meaning of the name of your child. It is simply because that name is alien to you. That name is not your name. That name is not your identity. That is why you are searching for the meaning via dictionary. But if the name is of your tribe, you do not need to go into dictionary. So my people, be my we are who. Let us make sure that we try as much as possible in living our life in accordance to our social cultural engagement, which is our heritage that is supposed to be our pride. Our heritage is our pride. Is your essence heritage your pride? If your if your essence heritage is your pride, then you will bear your essence name. You will not second your essence name for English name. And you will not even see any reason looking for English name to give to your child. 
we are meant to correct the errors of our forefathers or our forerunners. It is true that they did not get it all completely. That is why we, the forebearers, we, the offshoot of our ancestors, we are there to continue in the race of our ancestors and to appropriate whatever it was that were it perfectly appropriated. It is not for us to continue in the errors. As a matter of fact, do you know how English names came about? During the time of slavery, remember I told you about the hunter who came into Africa hunting for animals who eventually killed the mother elephant in his quest of hunting. Killed the mother elephant in order for him to be able to get hold of the baby elephant. The colonial masters, the slave masters, the slave owners who came into Africa hunting, they are likened unto the story of the hunter who came into Africa hunting for animal I told you. The slave owners, they came into Africa they hunted for slave. They took slave away. And when they took slave away to western part of the world, to America, they tortured their slaves to change their names to bear the names of their slave owners. That was how Africans started adopting the names of their slave owners. That was how Africans started bearing names that are alien to them. It was done out of torture. It was not that from African origin, we started bearing names that have no meaning in our tribal language. Now, slavery has been eradicated, but a lot of people are still chained in their mentality as unto the baby elephant that was chained in the Western world. And when the baby elephant grew to a mature elephant, the chain was broken and the elephant was allowed to go. But the elephant see no reason to go no longer because the elephant mentality has been colonized. The elephant mentality has been turned into the European mentality. The elephant is still mentally chained, is still mentally a slave. That is what has happened to a lot of Africans today. A lot of African people, most of my Eastern people who bear English name, they think they are intelligent. It is not intelligence, it is unknowingly being foolish. Sorry to use that language, but that is the facts. There is no other word to qualify that adjective. It is unknowingly being foolish. English name is not your name, it is not your identity, my people. So if we continue to live in accordance to this alien, Conduct. Our race will continue to go into a state. Because, for example, my name is John. And the, my child, his name is Peter. You will see that the names of my child will be John Peter. Oh, where is the stake of my identity? Where is the trace of my identity? And when I'm not, uh, 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 no longer alive, in other millennium to come, my children will be lost. My children will be lost. That is how our Asian people are breeding lost generation. We need to correct this. We need to appropriate it. We need to come back home. Coming back home means coming back to your own tribal identity. Our tribal identity should be our priority. Have you ever seen any Russian that his name is easy to pronounce for any other tribe? It's not easy to pronounce, but they, they must pronounce it. They must pronounce the name. The same thing with Chinese and so many other tribes across the globe. But the West Africans, my Eastern people, seems to still, seems to, seems mentally a slave. They are still mentally enslaved, even though the chain of slavery has been broken. 
Even though they've been let go, they don't want to go. They are still wearing the jacket of the colonial masters. They are still wearing the jacket of the slave owners. The jacket of the slave owners is the names that you bury that belongs to the slave owner. Let us decolonize our mindset. Let us decolonize our mentality. This is no longer Stone Age. Even in the era of Stone Age, our parents, the names of our identity, our tribal names, was their topmost priority. Was their topmost priority. My African people, I am putting this message today. This message is going to serve to us as posterity. Posterity we have it that Aibe Erodade Okosu said this in the year 2022 of December. So we should please go back to our roots. We should please endeavor in making sure that our heritage is our pride. When we say our heritage is our pride, what is our heritage? Our heritage is our social cultural engagement that we are instituted by our ancestors. Is our heritage our pride? If our heritage is our pride, my son, brother, Bachelier, what is your name? John Ibenier, Joseph Ibenier, Michael Ibenier, what is your name? And paraventure, if your father gave you English name, before you die, before you leave this earth, endeavor to appropriate the error of your father. Because your name is going to become a sole name to your son, to your daughter, to your children. Appropriate this error so that your children will not continue in that error. So, my people, let us not continue to assume that English is measurement for intelligence. You are not intelligent if you cannot speak your, your, your native language fluently well. You cannot speak and write in your language fluently well. You are not intelligent. You are only chained with the chain of the slave owner, mentally chained. As a matter of fact, all language across the globe are native. So, they are tribal people. Are you native of English? Are you native of Italy? Are you native of France? What? Where are you native to? That is where your name should be channeled to. You are not native of English. You are not a British native. You are Essan native. We Essans and native aboriginals. And let us make sure that we correct every error. Our ancestors tried a lot for us. If not for our ancestors, our tribal identity, our social cultural engagement, the language we speak, the food we eat, wouldn't have been. If it was us, everything that our ancestors instituted, we wouldn't have been able to do so. Because we always want to be more British than the English people. Or we want to be more English than the British people. We want to be more Christian than the Roman Catholic. But our tribal engagement, our social cultural engagement has been swept under the carpet. And by this, our race is going into a state right before our eyes. My people, I implore us to take a deep thought into this and for us to see every reason for us to return to our roots. For us to make sure that when we give them to our children, we give them SMS. Stop asking people what is your English name when you know these people are not English people. People that ask me what is my English name when I tell them my names are Aibe Erudari Okosu. And when I school them, 
they feel pity for themselves. They look for all means to go change their English name. You shouldn't ask people what is your English name. You shouldn't ask yourself what, what is my English name or what is your English name. You have no business with English. It is quite unfortunate, very, very unfortunate, that our national language in Nigeria is English. But that national language that we uphold, which it is English in Nigeria, it's not our tribal language. It shouldn't be our topmost priority. Your topmost priority should be your tribal language. My people, I greet us and I thank you for listening to Agbe Ewudari Okosu. Please do share this message so that it will get to every Asian person, so that it will get to every African people across the globe. Bye for now.